Hi, my name is Sanjay Nandraja. I'm a consultant working at Inglasia Pharma Solutions. This is a brief presentation on training of personnel. It shows you the structure that you need to have in place as a minimum if you're working in a space that either manufactures, stores or transports medicinal products. The first step is onboarding any new starter. Make sure that as a minimum, you assess what type of training that individual would need. And when I talk about training, I'm specifically talking about training around good manufacturing practices or good distribution practices. What type of training would that individual need? And make sure that training requirement is documented somewhere as part of the onboarding process of that individual. Also, when someone is onboarded, and they're working in an air environment where medicinal products are either manufactured or handled, um, those people need to have their access controlled. And when I mean access, it's access to areas within the premises or access to areas within a computerized system, just to make sure that people that don't have the right level of experience do not go in to a system where they could potentially pose a risk to the medicinal product, whether that be physical medicinal product within a, a manufacturing facility or data uh, around a medicinal product and a computerized system that could end up in the, in the wrong hands. So make sure that access control is clearly defined and controlled by an individual within the organization. Make sure that any new starter has a signed job description in place. I've gone to many organizations where I've audited them and found that individuals don't have a job description or they do have a job description, but it's outdated and it does not reflect their job role as of today. So make sure that job descriptions are there for every individual, they're signed, by the individual as well as the hiring manager, and it's kept up to date. There are so many occasions where I've audited facilities and found that their job description is just not up to date. And when I view, review their training records, it doesn't quite match up in terms of what they're doing and what their job description states they're supposed to be doing. Any new starter uh, needs to have an introductory training to either good manufacturing practices or good distribution practices. And this training should be provided ideally within the first month of the person starting at, at the, uh, the company. And they need to be receiving this training on an annual basis. So everyone that's within the company needs to be receiving a refresher training Every, every 12 months on GMP or GDP or even both, depending on the organization they work in. And this training needs to be documented in the individual's training file, as well as on a training matrix, so that there's visibility of who has and hasn't received training. Every individual in the, in the organization, especially if they're working in an environment of uh, uh, manufacturing uh, or, or, or storage and handling of medicines, um, they need to have a training file for each individual. That training file as a minimum should have their CV, their job description, and any training that they received on the processes that they need to follow around the handling of medicinal products. And this training can be training of, of different levels. Um, so they could have to start with a, a read and understand training, and uh, there would be a, a self-training form that they need to complete once they've read a procedure. Now, this typically would be for people that um, maybe don't perform the task on a daily basis. They need to be aware of it, the existence of that particular task. Um, so they just need to read and understand to, to note down that they are aware of that, that procedure. The next level of training is um, classroom training. And this could be where we get a group of people together and give them a, an overview of, say, good distribution practices. Um, so that would be 
classroom training. Then there's on the job training, which is a lot more detailed uh, and where typically um, you will have the subject matter expert training the new starter and observing how they perform the task, say on two or three occasions. And once they're satisfied that they're competent in performing the task, then the subject matter expert or the trainer will then sign off on a on a on a training uh, uh, on the job training record to say that they are satisfied with the individual's training and their competency on the task and will sign them off to say that they're now uh, capable of performing that task themselves. So typically an example of this would be uh, someone using an isolator uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a manufacturing facility and this training uh, would, would would ensure that the person knows how to uh, man do manipulations within the isolator unit and they will then sign them off to say that they can now perform that task. All this training, whether that be on the job, um, classroom or just a self-training, records of that training need to be kept in the individual's training file. Now, you don't just do the training once and that's it, you're, you're, you're set for life. Um, training ideally should be uh, re-evaluated on a, on a periodic basis. And certainly when, when procedures or processes are up updated, then uh, through the, the process of notification, individuals need to be notified that they need to be retrained. There should also ideally be a training matrix. Um, now, if it's a manual system that you're running, you, are, you have a, a smaller organization, then uh, typically I've seen uh, just an Excel spreadsheet um, where they, they keep record of uh, the, 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 the person's job title and the type of training that that job role would, would require uh, with respect to GMP or GDP. And within that, it will list the, 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 the processes that the individual would need to be trained on. Now, that will be your training matrix. Now, you can have a training tracker, which would be a, a mirror of the training matrix, but it would actually go into more details of the individuals giving their names and giving a status of their training in terms of have they completed it uh, or are they um, behind on their training or, or uh, are they due their training so you can have a uh, sort of a traffic light system to monitor individuals in terms of uh, their status in in terms of training now this should be managed by the training department i ideally um, quality should have an oversight of this dashboard um, so that they can see at any time um, where people are with their training and it could be people not just in in, in in quality or in manufacturing, it could be other departments as well, like finance, HR, um, regulatory. Um, so it'll be good uh, for quality to have this oversight um, so that they're better prepared in the event of an inspection. They could see straight away in, in terms of preparation who is behind on their training and to, to ensure that um, they're brought up to date ahead of any inspection. Uh, and not just inspections, but to make sure that people are always on top of their training uh, and certainly before they, they perform the task, uh, they are uh, familiar with the current process. And making sure that staff are kept up to date on the regulations uh, in terms of the tasks that they're performing. Say, for example, if you have someone that's going to be doing audits, um, it's a, a supplier management team, and they have some auditors there um, that they send out to do audits. Now, um, we, we don't want people to go out and do audits where they're not familiar with the current regulations. Um, so when you go and do the audits, that you are up to date on your knowledge uh, and make sure that um, staff that are performing certain tasks um, have evidence that they have been trained and they're competent to perform those tasks. Now that's an audit I gave you an example of. You could also look at a, a forklift truck driver um, for a warehouse that you, you store medicine, medicine in. You don't want to allow the driver that's inexperienced to drive a forklift truck within an area where they could potentially go and damage products. So 
make sure that they're trained, whether that be external training on, on how to how to, to drive a forklift truck and being kept up to date on that um, and documenting that in the training file. So make sure that um, that um, you maintain the, the competency of, of staff training. And as I covered early on as well, um, make sure that even training on their processes that they follow on a daily basis is is reevaluated on a on a periodic basis. Now we all know people don't stay in organizations forever. They do tend to move on. Um, so there will be a point when when staff will leave the organization. And to make sure that you have a structured way of offboarding the staff member, it will be good to have a sort of a checklist that goes through the things that you'd want to make sure you take off that individual before they leave the company. And typically, uh, not an exhaustive list, but you'd want to make sure that their access within the premises is taken away from them. Their access to electronic systems has been deactivated. Also, their training file is archived. And any any other connections they have within the organization in terms of um, the names and SOPs or access um, to, to their uh, electronic system where it's linked to to other 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 people those are all deactivated so that um, it's known to everyone within the organization that that individual no longer works for the company i hope you found this uh, a brief presentation on personnel training informative and it's given you a, a bit of an overview and this training is certainly for for people who are quite new to the industry or are challenging and asking why do I need to do this? Um, it gives you a bit of an understanding of what the expectations are uh, within the environment of uh, good manufacturing practices and good distribution practices for medicinal products. Thank you for listening. And if you do like this presentation, please do uh, like it. And if you have any comments or any feedback, please do leave it in the comment section. Thank you.